but I wanted someone to speak about it. So when Do you know the parable of the rich man? No. What's that? Well, it's a gospel story. I'm going to tell it because I see the problem that you're in. Well, there's a scene in the gospels where Christ is traveling in a cart and uh, a rich prince jumps in to accompany him and he tells Christ that He's done everything he should do in his life to be a moral person. He's followed the commandments. He honors his parents and so on, but that he's still dissatisfied deep in his soul. And Christ asks him about his situation. He tells him he's rich, that he has all these concerns going. And Jesus says to him, I'm afraid you're going to have to sell everything you own and follow me. And the disciples are like shorted right out by this. And they say, well, if that's the cost of salvation, you know, who's going to pay that? A passage that is profoundly misunderstood, Jesus' encounter with the rich young ruler is often cited as an alleged proof text to teach that salvation is conditioned upon keeping the commandments. The Word of God says in Matthew chapter 19, starting off in verse 16, And behold, one came and said unto him, notice this, Good master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. And he said unto him, Jesus speaking here, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, watch this, keep the commandments. What is the intention behind the Lord's instruction to keep the commandments? In other words, why did the Lord refer this young man to the law. This becomes evident when we understand the purpose of the law specific to salvation. Romans chapter 3 verse 19 says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. Why? That every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Notice this, for by the law is salvation. No, for by the law is what? The knowledge of sin. According to the word of God, the law does not save us, but rather shows us our guilt before God and need of a savior. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 says, Wherefore the law was our Savior. Is that what it says? No. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to do what? Bring us unto Christ that we might be justified how? By the law? No. By faith. Ideally, this young man would recognize his sinful condition condemnation and guilt before God, and consequently be justified by faith in Christ. Verse 18, he saith unto him, which, Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, don't miss this, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Blinded by his pride, this young man bears false witness literally moments after the Lord instructed him not to. All these things have I kept from my youth up. In reality, he was helpless, hopeless, and hellbound, going about to establish his own righteousness. Look at verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. The righteousness that God required, He Himself provided. God Himself provides the perfection that was not possible for man. In other words, God does for man what man cannot do for himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God became man to die for man's sin. In so doing, he satisfied his own justice, thereby making that which is impossible with men possible for men. The moment an individual believes on Christ, trusting him alone, the righteousness required, perfect and absolute, is imputed unto them. And the unfortunate truth is, the vast majority of mankind refuses to rely solely upon Jesus Christ. They refuse to transfer their trust to Jesus Christ alone. The rich young ruler failed to recognize his sinful condition, his inability to save himself, and his need of a savior. Today, he serves as a cautionary tale to all those willing to justify themselves, all those who consider themselves capable of meriting God's favor. My friend, you can't be right with God without God's righteousness. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. If you are not 100% certain that you're going to heaven when you die, I encourage you to watch the video in the description below, The Bible Way to Heaven, and be saved today. God bless.